Hello and welcome to Power GI. It's Graciela on the side of the screen. In today's video, we'll see how to add dynamic controls in Power Apps using galleries. A very useful scenario for this is when your app is used to generate invoices. Of course, you have an invoice header, but you also want to give your users the ability to add as many lines as they want for the invoice details. That could be 1, 5, 10 or 20. We don't know that in advance. We're gonna learn in this video how to leverage galleries to achieve that. And let's get started. So I have started a, a, an app from blank and then I'm gonna go to insert and then gallery and inside the options I'm gonna select blank vertical. For this specific scenario, we are only needing two input fields by each of the rows that we want to dynamically create. So I'm going to just click on the edit icon and then go to input text input. And I'm just going to rename this. I'm going to quickly add a hint text and then I'm going to do a copy of this field. And as you can see, this gallery is currently pointing to the custom gallery sample from Power Apps. However, we need to enable an option for the end user to dynamically add as many rows as they want. We're going to do that through variables and collections. And since we want that every time that the user comes to this screen, they will see always one line added by default. So we are going to use the invisible attribute of the screen number one, which is the one that we are going to have our invoices created in. So here I'm going to write the collect function and assign a name to my collection that will indicate the number of rows that need to be added to the gallery. In this case, I'm going to call it invoice lines. And inside invoice, invoice lines, we're just going to have one attribute, which is line number. And the default is going to be one. So let's select the gallery. And then the collection that we just created is going to show up as an option. Let's select that. And as you can see, one line is showing instead of four because we have now repointed the gallery to the, to the internal collection of Power Apps. Now we need to add a button to enable the users to add more, more rows. And let's go to the onSelect attribute. So I'm gonna use the set function and I'm gonna create a variable to store the number of lines. So what I'm going to do is just take the previous value and add one to it. We are going to add another item to the collection so the number of rows can keep increasing in our gallery. So that's the name of my collection and then I'm going to add the very same attribute which is line number. And here I'm going to point this to total lines. And there's a little typo here. I wrote invoice in my initial gallery name so I need to make sure I use the very same name. So let me just do this and then quickly click on play and as you can see we are now adding as many rows as we need and it could be also handy for the users to have an, an option to reset the number of rows back to one so we are going to also add an option for that on the unselect option we are going to clear the invoice lines collection so i'm gonna uh, reset again the variable name of total lines to one and then add one item to my collection so I can reset. So let's click on play. And if I click reset, everything goes back to one. And now we need an, a way to collect the information that the user will input in the text fields. So let's add a new control. We need pretty much to iterate each of the items of the gallery and extract the data written by the user. So for that, we are going to use the for all function. So let's select the, the submit option and then on the unselect attribute, let's start writing the function for all. So in this case, we are going to, to loop through our gallery which in my case is called gallery five old items. And by each of those items in the gallery, we need to collect in a second collection that we are going to create that I'm going to call final invoices line. So we are going to add into that collection two attributes. One is service description, and that's going to come from my service text input. And then I'm going to also use the amount charged. That's going to come from the other input field, which I just realized I haven't renamed. So let me 
do it real, real quick. And then let's go back to write our formula. So the first one is pointing to the service input and the other one is going to point to the amount input. So amount that text. Then let's just close the curly bracket and close the collect function. And finally, we're going to close the loop. So now what happens next depends on each specific use case that you're working on. But in this case, what I'm going to do is just add another screen in which I'm going to show what are the lines added by the user. So I will just go here to insert new screen. And here I'm going to add a data table and I'm going to point that data table to the second collection that contains the actual rows that the user is inserting. And then I'm just going to uh, click on edit fields and add my uh, service description and amount here. Since we are going to see those details in screen two, I'm going to go back to screen one and the submit option. And I'm going to navigate to my screen two. So once I navigate, I should see the items added in the gallery. Now let's click play. Let's reset and we're going to add three rows and then I'm going to click on submit. And that's going to automatically take me to the other screen where I will be able to see collection now contains everything that we got from the user. You can send this to SharePoint, you can send this to Power Automate or do any action that you need to perform on each of the lines that your user is inserting dynamically in the app. Now it's a matter of just adding some format to it. And as you can see, this is the final result of the app after adding some formatting to it. That's it for now. Thank you so much for watching. We are PowerGI.